Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome. Today we will start hazard identification techniques. Under hazard identification, there is the first thing to do is prepare a hazard list, which is known as preliminary hazard list. So, the content of today's presentation is hazard identification and analysis techniques, preliminary hazard list. So, how do you get the list? So, for that purpose, there are few things like preliminary hazard list overview, hazard list methodology, PHL worksheets and this worksheet will be filled up using information related to hazardous energy sources and hazardous processes and events, events. and after that two cases will be discussed. So, that you will understand that how this uh, total concept of identification of preliminary hazard list will be completed. Again this lecture has been taken uh, from hazard analysis techniques for system safety by Erickson by Erickson. Okay. So, here few concepts one is this engineering development life cycle model. Any product or process gone through the life cycle of it. Being industrial safety engineering the subject, so we are more interested in process life cycle and you just see that when you think of developing a process first is the concept generation, you know, what purpose it will serve, what is the requirement, who are going to use that means what the customers, the customer requirements all those things come under concept definition. For example, if we think the pressure tank system what uh, we have discussed earlier. So, and you have found you have seen that there is a pressure tank, there is pump, the total the other part. So, now if you think of that who what is the requirement of this pressure tank, then it is basically the gas at high high pressure will be stored and which will ultimately be distributed to utility equipment. So, that means this is what is the what is to be stored, how much to be stored, what will be the pressure range and all those things and who are going to be used. This is what is we are talking about the customer requirement here. But if we talk of a big plant like going to open a steel making plant or maybe a, a establishing an engineering project division. So, all those things these are the big things they are also you please keep in mind that the concept definition means it, 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 it is the starting point for any engineering system development. Then the, from the concept definition means knowing the customer's requirement or the thing. So, ultimately what will happen there can be many ideas. So, some of the ideas will be better ideas and finally, one of the idea will be selected and then the detailed design of this of this product or process will be started by design and development and here preliminary design, detailed design and testing will be done. Once these things are these things are completed then come the production and operation including maintenance then finally, you will think of at the end of the life cycle the process of the system will be disposed of. So, 
this is what is the totality in the ptd concept i i said that design build then operation maintenance then disposal the same thing and you see what we are talking about that hazard are induced in a system during the design and operation so this this is a very important part design part here hazard are induced obviously during operation means in a e stage also hazard can be induced but it is the design life cycle of a system that required to be analyzed for hazard identification I mean when you are interested to identify the hazard of a system you have to first understand the total life cycle of the system and then you must assume that that hazard will be induced at each stages of this life system life cycle and you have to identify all those possible hazards at the at the design stage even in the before the design so that though the action or protection against the hazard will be will be built maximally in the design stage okay so now when we are talking about hazard identification techniques we are talking about techniques which are applicable to the in system life cycle some techniques can be applicable to the entire the all the stages of a life cycle some time techniques may be a particular stage but there are the multiple techniques which are uh, which are developed in the academic and industry arena and some of the techniques are very very popular and some are uh, extensively used in industries and some are some are research type or research oriented having scope for uh, academic development so there are many many ways different hazard identification techniques you will find out and um, ultimately you have to use those techniques appropriately in the in the design stage itself okay so that hazards are identified and and hazards are uh, what i can say protected prevented to recur or occur so that people will be protected okay so let us see that uh, what are the different techniques that are available till now you see there are lots of techniques i am naming a few preliminary hazard list preliminary hazard analysis safety requirements criticality analysis sub system hazard analysis system hazard analysis operations and support hazard analysis health hazard analysis fault tree analysis failure mode and effect analysis fault hazard analysis functional hazard analysis snick circuit analysis software snick circuit analysis petri net petri net markov chain barrier analysis ben bin analysis so many software hazard analysis and so far i know uh, that there there are more than 50 hazard identification techniques already available in the literature why such a huge number of techniques the reason is in the context of its application so some techniques are applicable in a particular context in a particular design st stage of the system life cycle and the commonly used techniques what what i have come across so far i have seen that what is checklist is heavily used preliminary hazard analysis is used hazop failure mode and effect analysis failure mode effect criticality analysis fault tree analysis and then event tree analysis event tree analysis so these are the few things used mostly and and uh, and other techniques like your hierarchical task analysis hta which is hierarchical task analysis okay and in including including human error analysis including human error analysis is another important one and from software engineer hazards point of view petrinet is petrinet 
petrinet is used petrinet analysis okay so <laughs> the the logic behind so many analysis techniques identification analysis techniques i told you that you just think of a system engineering system you will find out that the system comprises of human then machine environment software so human machine environment software obviously there will be interface between them so interface between them will be there okay so now what are the techniques which are applicable to machine related hazard analysis then uh, environment related hazard analysis software related hazard analysis human related hazard analysis you think of a boiler there is there is a process going on you think of a chemical reactor some process going on so that mean that there will be there will be another one is that one the country what category is process so what are the technique that will be used for process hazard analysis okay so <coughs> second thing is that a system will be composed of several sub system system to sub sub system several sub system then several sub sub system then finally the components will become so a system will be composed of several sub system and finally a lot of component all those things so you may be when we are talking about the hazard analysis the obviously the first thing is the system hazard analysis so that mean now you can go by by system breakdown structure you find out the system components by system sub system sub sub system to say component level break up and then at the component level find out the hazards then then at the sub sub system level find out the hazards and sub system level hazards and finally aggregated all will give you the system level hazard okay so that means at what level of anal hazard hazard identification and analysis you are doing that also dictate what kind of technique you will be using so that mean essentially what i mean to say that it is that the which part of the hazard is considered which part of a system and second one is basically that what level of analysis you want level of analysis you want and depending on the two what will happen you will choose for example what if and preliminary hazard analysis these are very much used for any kind of things like human machine environment process it is maybe at the total system level or maybe at the component level it is possible hazard and operability studies it is it is mostly used in process industries process industries hazop failure mode and effect analysis which mostly used for machine and equipment related items fault tree analysis when you want to to dig down to from the top level events to the basic events mean suppose system level failure to the component level causes then like system breakdown structure there will be there will be the system failure also will be will be understood through different why why analysis with gates and symbols 
that will give you fault rate. So, fault rate is a little higher level analysis, it can be applicable to everything. Event tree, fault tree, then HTA and human error that human hazard analysis, Petri net for software hazard analysis. So, when you think of that environment contribution, there is environment uh, related analysis. So, of late what happened that there have been developments by which that some of the techniques which are originally developed for a particular in a particular context, they are expanded to other uh, other context or other situation. For example, the HAZOP can be used in maintenance also. So, that is known as maintenance operability studies. So, in that sense, the uh, that is why there are so many hazard analysis techniques are there. We are not able to tell you all the techniques, but some of the techniques we will be discussed. And today, uh, in this particular lecture, I will be discussing this preliminary hazard list. So, keep in mind there are multiple of techniques, those are known as hazard identification techniques, sometimes we say hazard analysis techniques also. But whatever may be hazard identification in the first stage, then followed by hazard analysis. And, and in any system, there will be there will be either process, it can be a chemical type continuous process, can be a discrete type process also. So, there will be there will be set of several equipment or machines, there will be they, they may be software controlled, may not be software controlled. So, there will be people that means human um, intervent system or subsystem or component or maybe automated or semi automated system subsystem and components. So, uh, depending on where you want to concentrate, if you are concentrating on human error, it is better you follow a hierarchical task analysis followed by any of the human error analysis techniques. So, we have some um, lectures on human error analysis in the later stages. Similarly, if you are interested to know most of the equipment type of hazards like your pump, motor, conveyor system. So, then perhaps this failure mode and effect analysis will be a better one. If you think no, um, your, 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 your system is process oriented like a uh, chemical like, like your petrochemical industry, like oil and gas industry, like in even in steel making. Uh, there are different kind of pro continuous processes are there, where the process parameters are known and their design intent are known and the de they are designed in that manner. So, uh, and through piping and instrumentation diagram P and ID, so P and P and ID that the, uh, the total system can be explained. Under such situation, uh, HAZOP is wonderful. Okay. So, <clears throat> this uh, PHA or PHL, PHA, HAZOP, FMEA, uh, all those things basically uh, they can be applied at the system level also subsystem level. So, but depending on the L and on the quantum of the system, if it is a very large system, it will be uh, intractable. So, you have to break the system into subsystem to component level and then apply. By saying this, I am not saying that you do not go for other techniques, you may go for other techniques, there are recent many techniques gradually are being developed, but this is a guideline. So, my guideline is when you are dealing with a process, where the pressure, temperature, flow, uh, uh, current and all those um, process parameters are uh, available, their design intent are known their operation details are easy to uh, are captured. So, I think the process deviation parameter devi uh, uh, deviation will be a better measure go for HAZOP. Suppose you are dealing with a con conveyor system or a crane uh, or any any discrete machines like uh, in the workshop uh, what we see, then it is better you go for failure mode and effect analysis. Okay. Suppose you want you have done uh, the uh, PHA, HAZOP, FMA at the at the maybe system or subsystem level and you want to further dig the you found out uh, the top level level accidents that can happen from this analysis and you want to further dig down 
to the root cause level of this fault tree analysis will give you wonderful result. Okay. So, this is the basis for why so many techniques are developed and, and you find out which of the techniques will be better suited for your system, for your subsystem, for your component. Even component can be further uh, broken into parts to identify the failure modes. Okay, I think it makes um, some sense. So, let us uh, go to go to preliminary hazard list. So, first what I will do, I will give you the steps what way you will do and then with example, I will show you that how I will demonstrate the steps and then finally, what is that you have to develop your own case. Okay. I do not know uh, your background because from which um, discipline you are coming from, but please remember the domain knowledge is very very important. So, the techniques and the examples I am giving to you where technique is domain independent, but the examples are domain dependent. It is not that I am taking examples from all the all purposive sectors, I mean all industries. It is basically a particular some in industry problem we will be discussing. But if you are suppose you are from a civil engineer department, civil engineer, then you have to find out a civil engineer uh, domain uh, where you are going to use this technique and accordingly you have to translate, you have to use this domain independent technique into your domain based on the examples as a guidelines. Okay. Thank you. Let us see that what is what you require to know for for doing PHL. Please understand design knowledge. By design knowledge, what I mean to say, you must know the your process or the system. Better word, we'll we'll be using the word system because it encapsulates everything. The system breakdown up to component level, parts level. The the function that each of the components will perform. The interdependency between the components, then subsystem versus sub subsystem, system versus subsystem, the fun cross functional dependencies, all those things. Then what are the parameters that are applicable? What are their design intent? Are you in a, uh, in a uh, can you just represent it schematically? When operation starts, how it starts, what are the operational sequence? So, what are the uh, all those things, operation maintenance, all those uh, actually things, how it will be performed, those will come under design knowledge. So, design knowledge is very, very important. If you do not have the system knowledge of system system design then you cannot break it into break it up to component level and if you don't know the component level functions the subsystem level function also you will not be able to understand so that is design knowledge and it is a vast thing but suppose if you are a if you are a mining engineer then i understand that you know the methods of that mine design, maybe it is underground open cast. If you are a metallurgical engineer and working in a blast uh, in a steel pl plant, I am sure that you know the design of blast furnace. Okay. That was if you are a mechanical engineer and uh, and handling the maybe the overhead cranes in a in a in a factory, then I am sure that you have the knowledge of crane. So, that is what I am saying that the design knowledge is you must have. Apart from design knowledge, the second thing you must have is the hazard knowledge. By hazard knowledge, what, uh, what is hazard and how hazard is ultimately converted to accident through different initiating mechanisms, all those things we have discussed so far. So, it is it is now imperative to say that you are in a position to tell know that what is hazard. And after going through all the um, techniques, your the definitely the hazard uh, knowledge will be improved. But at the basic level, 
whatever I have discussed so far that that you must have and you must be able to understand what are the hazardous sources that is hazardous elements and how the hazardous sources will ultimately occur through different initiating mechanisms and then finally, target and threat. So, those concepts you are for the domain where you are working in. So, that is important hazard knowledge. Another important one is the lessons learned the, the, the system for which you are interested uh, in designing. Okay. So, there what you will find out you will find out that a sim system similar system uh, it has been operational for since long and there have been many incidents or takes taken place or many inspections were carried out. So, as a result a good set of vocabulary is available with you the data is available with you. Maybe you have already designed similar uh, system and or some uh, that your company is having this or uh, then what will happen ultimately. So, when you are talking about design knowledge already you have learned from your previous design. So, that is also lessons learned. So, all those things you must have unless you have these inputs it is very very difficult for you to do any kind of hazard identification and as such safety engineering will be impossible for you. Okay. So, as a result you you all will agree with me that it is not a independent work it is a team work and the team comprises maybe design people, operation people, maintenance people, safety experts, analysts so many many. Okay. So, what will be the output? Output will be hazards, mishaps means accident, what are the safety critical factors and causal sources. In other sense I can say this will give you the safety domain ontology will be where data safety uh, either, either uh, through these inputs I am sure that from hazard analysis target trade the domain ontology domain ontology you will be able to prepare that is what is my outputs. So, how do you do it what is the process process is your design knowledge will be compared with hazard knowledge and then identify possible hazards. Design knowledge will be compared with the lessons learned identify possible hazards and document process. So, that means, hazard knowledge and design knowledge will be compared design knowledge and lessons learned will be compared. So, these two will be compared and these two will be compared and you will be finding out the gaps and then you will you will just continue. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is the methodology? Methodology it is a first is step 1 define the system. So, define scope build the system. So, it is basically your your knowledge about the system understand the system design operational concept major system component I told you already. Then plan for PHL what is the goal you define worksheet schedule process identify a system element function to be analyzed when you, once you have the define the system then system specific goals subsystem specific goals. Okay. You may be interested to know only the high severity accidents then that will be your PHL goal. You may say no I do not want to leave anything left. So, detailed goal you discuss then select team if you do not have team you cannot do it. Therefore, discipline design test manufacturing so different discipline people must be there then this team will acquire data acquire all necessary design operational process data needed for the analysis equipment list, functional diagram, operational concepts, hazard checklist you find out, previous lessons what you will learn all those things you bring then only it is possible. So, after that what happened once you have the knowledge uh, data conduct PHL, in PHL what you do construct list of hardware components evaluate conceptual system hardware compare with hazard checklist operational function compared with hazard checklist 
then identify and evaluate system energy sources compare with hazard energy hazard checklist evaluate system software function compare with system hazard checklist evaluate possible failure states so that means as i told you that there will be component there will be your software okay so you have to there will be different hardwares so all those there are different functions so that that specific um, design knowledge you have you have hazard checklist and then uh, compare them and find out this then what will happen once you do this you will have a hazard list now hazard list then recommend safety guidelines and design safety methods and then document okay so this is what is the process so methodology checklist you require you require checklist human hazards different accident general hazards energy sources then what is the system list there will be hardware there will be different source function software and different kind of hazards then you have a you have a re documentation table the table is like this you see preliminary hazard analysis system element type what kind of it is it's a equipment it's a process whatever may be then you number them then what item name system item name you write you write what are the hazards what are the hazard effects and comments okay these things you have to prepare this is what is hazard list i'll give you <coughs> one example and before that i said that you must have the hazard checklist here we are basically looking into hazardous energy sources you see that starting from fuel propellant to nuclear and cryogenics there are 22 energy sources i have taken this from this book Komamoto and Henley published the risk assessment. Similarly, you you will find out that there are different hazardous processes events. It can be acceleration, can be contamination, can be corrosion. So that means you require to have checklist. The checklist related to everything, and then design knowledge will be compared with hazard knowledge, and design knowledge will be compared with lessons learned, and follow the checklist. find out the gap document it and the documentation form i have already given to you it's it's a very 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 much your um, domain knowledge specific let us see this what is this it's s missile system weapon control system and then is missile system i have taken this from the ericsson book so suppose uh, this is the total system s missile system it is two sub system weapon control system is this and this is the weapon missile now again if you if you further break down the missile there will be overhead there will be battery there will be computer destruct fuel rocket boosters so these many component are there 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 okay so this similarly if you see this one this can be further broken down also now what is required if you want to really do a, you must know not only this you must know this what is this you see intended equipment list the missile its all components weapon that control system components what are the functions what are the energy sources applicable and what is the stage different stage so and when you basically talk about missile launching you see that there are different phases that is what i we are saying that system knowledge you take your own system are you able to break in this manner or not if not then you are it you are not you are not fit to do it then definitely you see that if in the team somebody else is there or not so you make the team in such a manner that they will be able to do it so missile launches 
missile storage in land storage site, missile transportation to ship, missile storage in shipboard magazine, missile installation in launch tube, missile in standby alert, missile launch sequence, missile flight to target. These are the different phases. How the PHL is used? Just I am showing you the documentation part. You see, system hardware is the system element type. That means you are first going to hardware, then software, human hair, environment. So many things will be there. No? So hardware, system, missile structure. This is my list one. What are the hazard? Missile body breaks up, resulting in fuel leakage and ignition source causing fire. Then hazard effect is missile fire. So the missile body breaks up, resulting in fuel leakage and ignition. So that means hazardous element and initiative mechanisms are told here. Missile body, because missile structure is the hazardous element. What will happen? It will breaks up, resulting in what? If this once this breaks up, fuel leakage ignition source then fire will take place fire who are target definitely the people and the property and common mean in which operation time in the ground it is happening similarly the same system element missile structure will be having another list missile body breaks up causing missile crash so causing fire and another is causing crash, missile crash in the during flight. In during ground operation this will take place, during crash this will take place. So, in this manner you will once you go for one, uh, for one hardware to another hardware like missile engine, then engine fails to start incorrect target, unsafe missile state and fuel release, this is the comment. Missile engine, engine fails during flight resulting in crash in correct target. So, you have to you have to prepare a list like this. So, what will happen once you come you take all the system element type from hardware to software to human air ok when you want entire system breakdown structure you make and you find out all the system items. So, for every system item you will be you may have one or multiple hazards and all those things once you list for a system it may be uh, hundreds of hazards will be there. So, that is important that list we want to find out. So, for this system there will be many more hazards, but I have shown only this uh, only 1, 2, 3, 4, but the list is very long. I request all of you to go through this book written by Ericsson and you will find out very interesting book and lot of lot of explanations are also given for this. Now, I will <coughs> I will give you an case what we have done, uh, it is a basically material handling case in a steel melting shop, uh, other I can say in a steel plant there is uh, from blast furnace uh, through torpedo hot metal from blast furnace by torpedo, hot metal blast furnace liquid metal very hot more than 1000 degree centigrade. So, that what will happen hot metal from blast furnace by with torpedo it will come here and then there is a transfer ladle hot ladle, uh, metal unloading from torpedo to transfer ladle. Then hot metal transfer by UT crane will transfer this to desulphurization unit. Desulphurization of hot metal by injection of CAC2 and, M and magnesium Mg that is happening here. And then what happened after desulphurization? that slag will send for recycling, but the desulphurized uh, hot metal uh, hot metal will transfer to uh, to biot crane to converter that is steel melting shop. So, conversion of uh, desulphurized hot metal to steel to uh, that uh, BOF ok. So, basic oxygen furnace. So, then further so, this is what is the total that hot metal uh, handling in a uh, steel plant. So, that uh, other one that a crane is EOT crane is used. Suppose, we want to do the preliminary hazard listing for this. Then what you require to do with reference to material handling, you must know what are the components or what are the different uh, system uh, types. First of all, hardware based if you go, it is more mostly of 
hardware type. So torpedo, ladle, then crane, then definitely desulphurization, then SMS. So all those things and SMS and desulphurization, there are some processes taking place. There will be there will be obviously when you talk about crane operator is there. There are software also in between some program will control. Okay, so for the time being, we I will just show you uh, suppose torpedo. What we what way we can do this? So see, system item is torpedo. System item is torpedo. Now hazard. Uh, this is additional thing we have added, but from here you can see hazard that fuel, fuel leakage, then what are the hazard effect, engine fire, possible human deaths. So, in this manner, in this manner several hazards are identified, that is what is the listing of hazards. So, to make it uh, ease of identifying the energy, different kind of energy are considered like chemical energy, thermal energy, energy, mechanical energy. It all depends on your knowledge, you can do. So, the, the basic documentation framework what I have given that is fine, but apart from this also you can augment it. There is no hard and fast rule that that will be used, but please keep in mind that hazardous element, initiating mechanisms, target and threats, the entire path that must be completely enumerated for every system item, there will be multiple such hazards. So, here 1, 2, 3, 4 like this, so many hazards we have identified. See this is torpedo, then ladle and crane, converter, so many things. Okay. So, so let me let me conclude what you have learnt here. That we said that there will be different techniques. More than fifty hazard identification techniques are available. Hazard identification technique. It is not that all techniques are applicable everywhere. Broadly, there will be process hazard. Process hazard. There will be equipment or machine hazards, there will be human hazards, there will be software hazards, these are broad, broad things, these are important. So, you have to and another important one is that system knowledge. So, system to subsystem, then sub subsystem and finally, maybe the all the components, this structure is very, very important. So, there in the system there will be definitely hardware point of view then process equipment software point view software will be there human will be there you do first identify maybe you do this kind of breakdown and finally at the component level you come otherwise you can do also suppose you consider the hardware find out that that every hardware item how it fails what are the hazards avail available there so, what are the hazards there then it is better to have the checklist. So, mostly in large uh, plant with high risk the energy is very important one. There are energy sources starting from your gravitational energy to high level energy like your explosive all are available there. So, all hazard when you take a hazard a, a system item and compare with the energy sources, you first see that what kind of energies are um, uh, sourced there. And then you know, if you have the functional knowledge of that sub, uh, of that system item and you if you know that how that system item is interlinked with other system items also. So, then what happened the you are in a position to find out the initiative mechanisms. Few initiative mechanisms related to the system item only, but few are dependent on may be other things, but whatever may be the thing that system item one identified then the all uh, all the hazard using hazard checklist and hazard energy sources you will be able to find out the identify the hazardous elements 
and using the hazardous process and element the initiating mechanisms can be identified and obviously because of your the system knowledge and operational knowledge you will be you will be in a position to know who what is the target and threats so once you do this then your your hazard list is ready for example suppose i take a system okay there are suppose five hardware item suppose two software and let it be one operator so a five hardware item may be every hardware item there are let be six number of uh, hazards so that is 30 need not be everything has 16 someone five someone six like this the 30 for two softwares you may get another 20 for one operator you may get another five so maybe 55 hazard hazards you will find out by hazards 55 hazards i am talking about hazard triangle so 55 hazard triangle you can develop okay so this is what is hazard list and i hope that it makes sense and because we have shown you two cases also uh, if you are not able to understand you just repeat the video and go to the case again pause there and see that what is written and in this way you will definitely learn the hazard list okay thank you very much